Welcome to To Your Health. I'm your host, Rhonda Alfred, and joining us on this episode is Brett Chasson, the director of the Healthy Lifestyle Center at Terrebonne General Health System. We will discuss heat exhaustion, the signs and symptoms, causes, treatment, prevention that you need to know to keep you and your family safe this summer. Welcome to the show, Brett. Well, appreciate you having me on, Rhonda. All right. Well, let's get started with you telling us a little bit more about yourself and your role at Terrebonne General. Yeah, so uh, I am a certified athletic trainer. Uh, so my role is, you know, helping athletes out from the sports medicine aspect of it, uh, even though I am the director of the Healthy Lifestyle Center now. That's my background. That's my passion. That's my love, uh, helping out those athletes. All right. So an important topic we're going to discuss today, heat exhaustion. Absolutely. All right. Let's uh, get started with just telling us what is heat exhaustion. So pretty much here in South Louisiana, uh, no matter if you're an athlete or you're working at home in the yard, whatever it ends up being, you having to deal with heat. There's all kind of heat related illnesses uh, that we're having to deal with, heat syncope, whenever you start passing out, muscle cramps, uh, everything all the way up to heat stroke, which is a medical emergency. That's one thing we want to educate the community about. If we do get to from a heat exhaustion stage to heat stroke stage, we need to go ahead and cool that person as soon as possible, get them to um, the next level of care with the emergency room and uh, make sure we're taking care of it properly. All right. Well, what are some signs and symptoms of heat exhaustion? So heat exhaustion wise, typically if somebody is pushing through outdoor activity, uh, they most probably didn't eat properly, didn't drink properly. Their body's not fueled for that activity, whatever they're doing, whether you're an athlete working at home, putting up a fence or something like that. You don't have the fuel to go ahead and get through that activity. You start getting, you know, very throbbing headaches, excessive sweat. You may start feeling nauseous. You can start getting muscle cramps. And that's kind of that heat exhaustion stage. Whenever you start becoming, having an altered mental state or you start becoming unconscious, things like that, um, that's whenever you get more to that heat stroke stage. And that's whenever that medical emergency is there. Okay. All right. Well, let's just break it down a little bit more. Mm -hmm. What can cause heat exhaustion? Like, like I said before, it's whenever you're not prepping your body right, whenever you're in activity, if you are thirsty at that point, you're already dehydrated. So you need to be drinking before activity, during activity, after activity, so you can go ahead and prep your body, not only for what you're doing upcoming, but for the next day as well. Okay. And what's some good things to drink? Oh, we want to drink water throughout practice, obviously, but we also want to replace all the electrolytes that we um, expel throughout the body whenever we are sweating. So your Powerades, Pedialytes, Gatorades, things like that to go ahead and replace um, all the electrolytes that you're losing whenever you're sweating. Okay. And how do we treat heat exhaustion? So heat exhaustion wise, we always want to catch it in that heat exhaustion stage. So once we notice somebody's having some issues with the heat, we want to try to cool them down. We don't have to submerge them in the cold water immediately. But if we can go ahead, cool them out, take them out of activity, uh, drink your water, drink your fluids, um, maybe pour some water on top of your head, try to cool your body down a little bit. Um, when you're in that stage with heat exhaustion, you can go ahead, put your ice packs around your neck, underneath your armpits and in your groin. Whenever you start getting to that heat stroke stage, if you don't have cold water submersion, you can do that as well. But the best thing to do is try to get them fully submerged up to their neck, cold water at least 60 degrees or below. And we're trying to get that core body temperature down below 102 degrees at that point. Okay, so it sounds pretty serious. What the difference, mm -hmm. what is the difference between heat stroke and heat exhaustion? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, realistically, it's whenever your core body temperature is above 104 degrees. Um, so we're having to check that core body temperature in order to go ahead and get that. You don't get an accurate temperature if you're taking it just by mouth or the ear or the forehead. So we have to get the core body temperature in order to get an accurate reading of where the body's at throughout that time. Because I always try to explain it to the athletes and the coaches that if you're having a Thanksgiving dinner and you're cooking a turkey, you're supposed to only cook it for three hours. At three hours, you turn the oven off, it's still hot in that oven. You just leave it in there for an extra 30 minutes that meat's going to still be cooking. That'll be just like your internal organs still cooking on the way to the emergency room. You need to go ahead and cool that body down before you transport them to the next level of care. Great analogy. Mm -hmm. So what are some ways that Terrebonne General Community Sports Institute helps the athletes manage their 
um, these kind of conditions. So biggest thing is the education part of it. We try to educate them before the season even starts. Hey, you need to take care of your body. You need to be drinking the proper fluids. Um, one, one easy way to go ahead and check your hydration status is your urine, honestly. If you have a clear urine, most probably you are hydrated. If not, if it's more darker, then obviously you're probably dehydrated at that point. Uh, the preventive measures uh, that we go ahead during practices, we have our certified athletic trainers over at the practices at the high schools within Terrebonne Parish. So we're there to go ahead, treat the athletes, make sure, reinforce, stay, stay hydrated throughout practice. If something does happen, we are there for the emergency care though. All right, well, what is the one main takeaway you want our viewers to know? So biggest thing is listen to your body. Make sure to go ahead, drink, eat properly um, prior to activity, during activity. And then also, if you do come to a heat stroke uh, related injury, we need to make sure cool first, transport second. All right, well, thank you so much for all you're doing for our athletes and our community. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. For more information on managing and preventing heat exhaustion or heat stroke, please visit TGHealthSystem.com. I'm Rhonda Alford. Thanks so much for joining us on To Your Health. I'll see you right back here next week.